Greetings. Welcome back to Black Bear News, where we are discussing climate change, abrupt climate change, and things adjacent. Please remember to like the video and to make sure that you are still subscribed. Um, so there was a newer post that everybody was asking me whether they had seen, whether I had seen a new post from Arctic News. I had not seen it and until I'm putting my eyes on it right now. Could humans go extinct within years? <clears throat> Somehow I... I'm guessing I already know where this is going. Um, above image depicts how humans could go extinct within years. Look, I'm not trying to be dismissive of this article. I, I, I really like Arctic News. Um, this just is a repeat of, I'm sure, other articles that have come out saying that, you know, we have very little time, kind of giving the same evidence over and over again and the same prediction over and over again. So it's not, this is not new news. Um, but it's something to consider for sure. Um, is this our trajectory or a path? It's a, it's a possible path. It's one of many possible paths. Some people feel that it might be the more likely path. Um, who knows? <laughs> take it in, take in information as you will and you know digest it think about it consider it sometimes you might think something is true for a long time and then consider it to be not as true later um that's kind of how information works nothing is nothing is ever you know set in stone you know things are rarely set in stone let's just put it that way above above image depicts how humans could go in, extinct within years the image was created with NASA Loti 19, uh, 1880 to December 2019 data, 0.78 C adjusted to reflect ocean air temperatures as opposed to sea surface temperatures. I almost feel like this is an exact copy of of the last article that kind of dealt with this same thing. So <clears throat> um, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Uh, as opposed to sea surface temperatures to reflect high, higher polar temperature anomalies as opposed to leaving out missing data and to reflect a 1750 baseline as opposed to a 1951-1980 baseline. With two trends added, blue, a long-term trend based on January 1880 to December 19 data. Red, a short-term trend based on January 2009 to December 2019 data to illustrate... <clears throat> El Nino, La Nina variability and how El Nino could be the catalyst to trigger huge methane releases from the Arctic Ocean. This updates an earlier post with more detail. Updates an earlier post with more detail on how the image was created. Image below shows El Nino, La Nina variability going back to 1950. Added to the NOAA monthly temperature anomaly. Uh, the image on the right shows how ocean heat has increased over the years from the paper record setting ocean warth, warmth continued in 19, uh, 2019, excuse me, by Li Jing Chang et al. That is a, that is a scary amount of warmth. And that is um, mostly happening since it looks about 1985 or 86 or so. Starting then is when the trajectory really like whammo goes up um, in a very steep incline. Ocean heat is increasing, increasing rapidly, especially on the northern hemisphere, as illustrated by the NOAA image below, showing the rise from 1980 through 2019. The image underneath uses the same data, has a trend added, pointing at a 1.5 C anomaly from the 20th century average by the year 2026. Okay. <clears throat> As discussed in an earlier point, there is a tipping point at 1 C above the 20th century average, i.e. there are indications that a rise of 1C will result in most of the sea ice underneath the surface to disappear. 
The sea ice is used to consume the inflow of warmth, salty water from the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. So while there may still be sea ice left at the surface, the latent heat buffer will be gone. Um, loss of latent heat buffer buffer speeds. Wait, lot, loss of the latent heat buffer speeds up heating of the Arctic Ocean with the danger that huge amounts of methane will be released from the seafloor which is already occurring. This is already happening, not could lead to, could lead to more or, or larger releases, but we are already seeing major releases of methane uh, from the Arctic and elsewhere. The image below illustrates the danger showing that peak methane levels as high as 2670 parts per billion were recorded by the MetOp-1 satellite on January 2nd not long ago, 2020. <clears throat> uh, most worryingly, a large, almost solidly magenta-colored area blankets the eastern Siberia Arctic Shelf with magenta indicating levels above 1,950 parts per billion. If you can see the magenta there. Also way down here. <clears throat> Where is that? Um... Looking like down towards North New Zealand, I guess. Uh, yeah, this is not good. <clears throat> Moving on. Um, I had no idea about this, uh, that this was such a problem. But apparently feral pigs are a huge nuisance all over the U.S. and Canada. Um they're they're wild pigs and they they are everywhere i I had no idea that I was listening to Joe Rogan interview Jimmy Dore and uh Joe Rogan started talking about feral pigs and I was like what what is this so they're incredibly invasive species and they're really hard to kill and they're eating everything in their path I'm not even going to read this article I'm just going to give you a summary but Apparently, there are a huge problem in Texas, a huge problem in California. I had no idea. Huge problem all over Canada, and they're growing and growing and growing. They what the, the problem is, is that they reproduce really fast. They have a couple litters a year, and each litter is like four to six animals. And uh, the population grows incredibly fast, and they eat everything in their sight, and they're also incredibly dangerous. They will uh, attack humans. They will rush humans. Um so you have to be very careful. So um, I wasn't aware of this. I'm making you aware. If anybody lives in areas where they're having feral pig problems, uh, be on the lookout. <clears throat> and apparently they're combating this pig problem with, I mean, they're just, you know, just open uh, license to kill, basically. Like you can shoot them on site anywhere um, because they're such a problem. The problem also, though, with that is that even if you shoot them, they will still rush you. So that it's probably better to just stay stay away and don't go out running around trying to kill uh, feral pigs unless you are a very experienced hunter. Um, lastly, in this video, Miami Beach. U.S. dumps huge amounts of sand on Miami Beach to tackle climate change erosion. Oh, and they're going to keep on trying to do this. Actually, this might not be lastly. I have another thing about tackling um, rising oceans. In the queue, Miami Beach, dozens of trucks have started dumping hundreds of thousands of tons of sand on Miami Beach as, as part of U.S. government measures to protect Florida's tourist destinations against the effects of climate change. We have erosion hotspots, said Stefan Leatherman, an expert on beaches and the environment at Florida International University. When the beach is critically narrow, there's not enough room for recreation. For all the people that come here, and more important, perhaps all these buildings need to be protected, he said Friday, perhaps. Leatherman, known locally as Dr. Beach, <laughs> uh, said that rising sea... I don't know why that's funny, but it's kind of funny. D said that rising sea levels uh, triggered by climate change are causing the accelerated erosion of the famous beach, uh, as well as coastal storms, and in particular, hurricanes. Uh, as I've said before, if you, and they mentioned the king tide down here, 
South Florida is considered ground zero for climate change. I mean, not only do we have beach erosion, we got flooding going on during king tides, which happen all too often now, where some roads... Get, so they get, you know, basically flooding um, when there isn't a storm. They just... The, the the tide is high enough that it comes starts to come and flood the city streets or flood buildings. It is not long before South Florida and Miami are not going to be habitable places or there's going to be large parts of the city that are not going to be habitable. And I highly suggest to you, if you own property, to take, you know, whatever you got to do, sell that house or... You know, take a loss, whatever it is, get that, sell that property and get on out. Um, is your do and now, right now, not like next year, not like because it's happening right now. Within five years, it's going to be, there's going to be no housing market probably in many places in Miami. <clears throat> That's my prediction. And, you know, I'll put a, I'll put an 80% on that. Lastly, uh, the $119 billion seawall that could defend New York. Or not. So they're proposing. It's crazy. They're proposing this seawall because they don't. They don't want to put a barrier on land because everybody will think, oh, that's ugly. It's like a 20, 30 foot wall uh, around South Manhattan. We can't have that. Just, you know, destroying our sight lines. So we're going to build these huge gates out in the ocean. Uh, <clears throat> at what cost and at what CO2 emissions are these gates going to be built with? Six mile long barrier would help protect the city from floodwaters during fierce storms like Sandy, but critics say rising seas make the option inadequate. Um, I'm not gonna read this whole thing. I've already read this article, but just kind of give you the overview. Picture a storm surging towards New York City, pushing a surge of seawater like the one that flooded the region during Hurricane Sandy, but this time man-made islands with retractable gates stretch from uh, the Rockaways in Queens to a strip of land in New New Jersey, south of Staten Island. The gates swing shut. A six-mile-long wall blocks the deluge, saving property and lives. The giant barrier is the largest of five options the Army Corps of Engineers is studying studying to protect the New York area as storms become more frequent and destructive on a warming earth. Uh, No mincing words about climate change being the culprit in this. The proposals have sparked fierce debate as New York, like other coastal cities, grapples with the broader question of how and to what degree it must transform its landscape and lifestyle to survive rising seas. New York, maybe not as soon as Miami, but New York might be in trouble in in a very near future scenario. How many more hurricane types, you know, Hurricane Sandy type storms or storm surges can they weather before people start going, uh, maybe now is a good time to get out of New York. Uh, Catherine McVeigh Hughes, who led a community board in lower Manhattan during hurricane Sandy supports the outer Harbor, outer Harbor barrier, because she said protection means protection measures built solely on the coastlines yet high enough to ward off the biggest floods would be unsightly. Oh dear. Heavens my, that's, we can't have that. Do we want a 20 or 30 foot wall between Battery Park and the river? She asked. Heavens no. Advocates like Ms. McVeigh Hughes are attracted to the prospect of an enormous barrier that would protect much of the region. They say also say that the use of locally tailored onshore solutions alone, like berms, wetland, wetlands restoration, restoration, and raised parks would likely benefit wealthy areas first, not the low-income communities that suffered disproportionately from Sandy in 2012. <clears throat> and that did happen. Despite its boldness, a barrier like this has alarmed many resilience planning and environmental experts who say it is an oversimplified myopic, uh, myopic, however you like to pronounce it, concept that does not attempt to address several major climate threats and could even make things worse. Could make things worse. The core's barrier designs aim to address only storm surges. They would not counter two other climate-related threats, flooding from high tides and storm runoff. And they could trap sewage and toxins, which would then threaten the nascent ecological revival of New York, New York's waterways. The Corps estimates the wall to cost $119 billion 
dollars, $119 million. And it is unclear if the city, New York State, New Jersey, and Congress will agree to jointly fund the project, which would take 25 years to build. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, this is this is a stupid idea. This is a dumb idea because it costs 119 billion dollars and will take 25 years to build. By the time they build this thing, it all it will be too late. It'll be too late. The storm the storm surges will already be too bad. Our, there will all be all there will already be damage done. This is ridiculous. <clears throat> Even if construction went smoothly, opponents say the barrier could be obsolete within decades because they say the Corps' estimates of future sea level rise are too low. <laughs> Not only obsolete, it could just be damaged or ruined in the process of being built because, hello, storm surge. Oh, we were building this thing. It was going to take 25 years to build, but six or seven years into it, it, it was destroyed. We had to start over again. Or we had to start from scratch or, you know. We had to repair the damage that was done to the thing that we already started building. Um, the Corps says that its designs can be modified for higher seas and em emphasizes that it is not wedded to any of the five options it is studying. <clears throat> well, remain flexible. That's good, guys, I guess. There was another potential sticking point, according, according to Kimberly Ong, a senior attorney at the Natural Resources Defense Council, an influential environmental group. When it rains, New York's storm water and sewage system could back up and push waste into waterways. <clears throat> a big barrier said uh, Miss Ong could trap that sludge closer to shore. We'd essentially be sitting in a bathtub of our, of our own excrement, she said. Delicious. <laughs> This is the challenge when you when you know climate change rears its ugly head and threatens to wipe out these huge cities and then they come up with um, these you know tech huge tech fixes that turn into problems in and of themselves. In the, in the New Orleans area levees that the core recently spent 14 billion dollars to upgrade are sinking and are projected to be inadequate within four years <clears throat> again another really you know as i know this sounds really harsh and i know this is lame and i know people would be upset um but had people realized that hurricane katrina was climate change induced and that future you know Future storm surges and and storms and hurricanes and flooding will only become worse, and you're not going to hold back the tide. Um, the really wise thing to do would have been to, you know, declare New Orleans, you know, uh, on shape, you know, whatever on on borrowed time, right? Like, okay. Do you have to rebuild the city or, you know, could you possibly consider moving people out somewhere else? <clears throat> people are going to have to think about these these issues because Miami, New York, Boston, New Orleans. Um, I'm sure there are other cities that I'm not thinking about, but, you know, you're not going to you're not going to build flood walls or storm surge walls or barriers in every one of these cities. You're just not going to do it. And they're they're not going to be enough. And they're going to be just stupid, insane waste of money. And they're going to pump more carbon in the atmosphere. So probably the wise thing to do would just to be like, look, this is the future. This is what's going to happen. We're going to have to take evasive action. We're going to have to, you know, swallow our pride, you know, lose our attachments to these cities that we, oh, we have to save these cities. Do you have to save the cities? Um, you know, you're going to have to get over it on some level and suck it up because things are never going to be the same again. And things are never going to go back to the way that they were not in our lifetimes and not in, not in generations, you know, hundreds of generations to come. So, um, you know, realistic acceptance is what is necessary here. Not, um, spending billions of dollars to fight, you know, uselessly fight what is happening already, what is underway already. Um, there are other better 
areas that we could put that money um, to use in. Um, yeah, that is all I have for you today in this video. Thank you so much for your eyes, your ears, and your conscience. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do so at the links below. Until next time, peace. Thank you.